Friends, thank you for watching my channel. I just want to remind you if you need wallpaper, go to www.wallpaperboulevard.com. Tell them Spencer sent you. This is a wallpaper by Kelly Werstler. W-E-A-R-S-T-L-E-R. -E -E very popular high-end um, pattern. Kelly Wurstler. You think it's your worst nightmare, but it really isn't. Two ways to do it. Trim it on the wall. Or bring it to the wall already trimmed. And leave the scraps behind. Don't be intimidated by this. Today is Monday. This piece was hung on Friday. And no, I didn't work Saturday. And this piece is being hung on, hung on a Monday. And also was trimmed on the bench on Monday. This wasn't trimmed on the bench. This piece was. A lot of you good hangers are afraid to hang us. Are you afraid to hang this? Can I suggest to you that if you're afraid to hang it, that it's a misguided or miss, it's an unfounded fear? Completely unfounded. Okay. Now, you can do it this way. There are a couple of ways to do it. Let me draw a laser line. Each sheet on either side has two types of marks. First of all, it has a cell wedge, which I've trimmed off. Uh, I'll show you what that is later. That is the trim point. The problem with this screen printed wallpaper, this is hand painted, so it's a screen print problem with this is, in my opinion, they don't put these lines sufficiently on the wallpaper. Consequently, what you wind up doing is making your own lines from the selvage to this vertical line so that you make sure that you have a straight line. It's simply a function of measuring from the selvage to the left side of that line and then you do the same thing all the way down and you draw a line but you can do you can you can accomplish the same thing with a laser line let me show you what i mean 
Would you agree that if this is plumb, this piece here, let me say it again, if this piece is plumb, that you've essentially drawn the line I was talking about by dropping a laser line to the left side of that trim mark. And the laser line makes up for your pencil mark on the table. This is one way of doing it. Remember, if this piece is plumb, you can assume that the laser line represents an equal amount of space from this point to here as it does this point to here as well as this point to here. Now I repeat that because we selectively listen. This has to be straight in order for this to work. Let's do it. This is high quality material, high quality, very high quality. Okay, remember, don't get afraid of this stuff. Don't do that to yourself. That would be silly. Don't be afraid of wallpaper that costs. Don't be afraid of wallpaper that costs $2,000 a sheet. Somebody's gotta hang it. And that somebody is you. And it's me. For you grammar aficionados, I should say, and that is I. Right? That's you, and that is I. Okay. Let's get that trim piece out of there. Now, I'm here to tell you that you can do this. You can do it. What stands between your inability to do it and your ability to do it is you. Okay. All right. Now, what do you think? I'm not going too rough with this. Nice and easy. All right. So, after washing it up, and you want to wash this right away, right away, nice and easy, don't go crazy. Do you see me doing this? Don't do that. After you do what I just did, you need to displace the track marks that you make with your tool. Okay? Nice and easy. Nice and easy. 
nice and easy. Nice and easy. Now, your seam is done. Okay. Done. Now, don't kill the paste bubbles. They go away on their own. Nice and easy. That's it. Leave the little paste bubbles alone. They go away. We'll do this one differently. I trimmed off the bleed, unlike the previous cut, right? Remember, this was hung Friday, today's Monday. So what we should have when I join today's piece to this piece is what you would call pre-trimmed wallpaper seam, a butt joint where your conventional wallpaper comes in a package and it's pre-trimmed, which means you don't have to trim it. Okay, that's our quote-unquote factory cut right there. You could do that on the table, or you could do it on the wall. And you'll notice that, although we have the window interrupting our piece, we keep the same line. You see the laser there? Well, it's up there too. See? Just a light misting. If your paste is, is full strength, with this product, it absorbs so much, it starts making the installation difficult because your paste begins to dry quickly. And, your water prevents it from drying too quickly. Okay, so I just missed it. I don't add paste to the bucket, just on the table. We can't have that line on the wallpaper. It has to be cut off. It's pretty thick. It's more than a sixteenth of an inch, this line from left to right. So we have to cut it on the right side or else it'll be in our portrait. We measure the distance, eliminating the black line to the edge of the wallpaper. And you can see it right there. All right, at the four inch and three eighths mark, you'll see the edge of the wallpaper, and you'll see that the six inch mark is our safe zone. I need to replicate this measurement all the way up and make pencil marks and form my own trim line because they don't put enough trim lines on the wallpaper. So I do my measurement, make my line there, and I wanna make a standout so I know, because there's a lot of writing here, I wanna stand out where I made my mark. And now I'm going to put my straight edge against my marks. Now you see I can find my mark easily. You see? Make that nice and big. Okay, so I just now join 
my marks and when I do that I will trim off an equal amount all throughout the paper. Notice that I have folded the paper over so I can get double the amount cut with one swoop of the knife. See that? I have it doubled up. You want to be able to see your pencil mark in its entirety. If you can't see it, it'll wind up in your portrait. What I mean by that is, it'll wind up on your wallpaper after you trim it. And it's a pain to get it off. So, let's do it. Nice and easy. Steady. Take a break when you have to. Nice and easy. Okay. I have eliminated the pencil mark, and now I have a factory edge. I have to do the same thing over there. This is what I referred to earlier as the selvage. Okay? It's just a fancy name for wallpaper that happens to be a pain in the neck. That's all. Folks, do not assume that the distance over here is the same as it was over here. Uh, uh, uh. Remeasure this point to this point or else you might wind up embarrassed. Remeasure. Sure enough, this side was an eighth of an inch difference. I'm holding my trim edge and I'm just going to cut along the edge. Hold your knife square with the wallpaper. If it's on a 45, you're gonna wind up with a very visible seam. Square with the table, square with the wallpaper. That means straight up against it. Okay. Simulating for you. Can't do everything on video. Factory cut. Factory cut. You don't have any trim lines here. Nothing to erase or paint over. If you do, get matching paint and match the finish. This is a matte finish. You can do it. It happens. Okay. I have a perfectly trimmed piece of wallpaper here. For the folks who make this, can I ask you to please trim it before you send it to us? You make our lives a lot easier. Well, let's join the seams and see how I did. Fold that over so we don't get paste on the ceiling. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, this is the easier way to do it, right? Now, you'll have your water bottle with you, and you will open up the seam and spritz it so that it's a little easier to manage joining the seams. Okay. Let me do my job, and I'll come back when I show you perfection. I hope you'll agree. You can overwork the seams with this material. It's not just Kelly Wurstler, it's Schumacher as well. The material, the front of it is highly porous. What do I mean by that? It's not a satin finish. 
it's porous. You can actually feel a slight porosity as you roll your fingers. Now, you can fray the edges if you overwork them. So you don't want to do that. You'll get the hang of it, just like I did. Okay? I'm here to show you that you can do this. You can do it. Don't think that you can't do it. I'll put the final touches on this as I close this video. Okay? Three tools when you're hanging this. A sponge, a smoother, and a water bottle. Why a water bottle? To make your life easier. Just to make it slide, keep it alive so it doesn't dry up. A wipe. I want first, and I smooth. This is why products like these give you a hard time. I'll show you what I mean. So you got this matching up here. This isn't matching in the middle. You put it in place with the sponge. You get traction from the sponge. Okay. Look what happens. I pull it down. Look. I can move it. It worked. I get rid of the buckles with this. I wet it if it starts drying up. Okay. Let me show you down here. Come down here with me. Oh, perfect. Perfect match. But it's hard to push. Okay. That's why I want you to get a water bottle. Oh, man. So now this isn't matching. Now let's talk about logistics. You're a paper hanger. How long will this take you to hang? Answer, twice as much time as it takes to hang just about everything else you've ever had. Just about twice the time. You are looking at a product that is tedious and time consuming. This has to be done every two linear feet. Wrestling with the seam, okay? Don't let people say, oh, no way. Put it in place with a brush. You never hung it with a brush, if that's your suggestion. Because I got people telling me, use a brush. Brush isn't going to save you any time. You hit this wallpaper with that hard brush, you're going to rip it. Trust me. Trust me, I'm going to tell you. Okay, practicalities. This is a workout. You take it twice the amount of time, and it's a physical workout. Okay. Now, once you got your two linear feet, 
in place, you have to push all the buckles over to the other edge. Let me show you what I mean. So we're creating buckles. See that? You're gonna get rid of them, right? They come out, but this is a grass cloth, which pretty much lays down like a, a comforter on a bed, right? Quickest way to make a bed, right? Get a comforter. You wake up in the morning, put the comforter on the, on the mattress, the bed is made. That's grass cloth. That's grass cloth. Kelly Worstler is like making the bed with non-fitted sheets. The analogy will suggest the, the precision with which the wallpaper is hung, you know? A fitted sheet, you know, with the elastic, it's easier, right? Kelly Wurstler. Yeah, that's very similar to making a bed. Okay, making a bed. Where you have to do it all yourself. Okay, so far so good. I think you're going to like it. It's another long day. <laughs> what makes this difficult to install is the manner in which it's manufactured. Okay? You will find that this product, Kelly Wurstler, uh, many of the screen prints from Schumacher, and other hand-painted, as they call them, products are. And that is, remember when you were a kid, you finger-painted on a piece of construction paper your mother got from the store, right? Well, when you put that finger paint on the paper, what happens to it after it dries? It curls up. Consequently, the edges are razor-sharp, literally razor-sharp when it dries. This stuff will cut your hand open. I kid you not. It's razor sharp. What does that do to the paper when it's saturated with the liquid from the paste and it's on its way to drying? What happens is that the because of the way in which it's manufactured, yes, this is a hand-painted product, but it isn't actually paper that was painted upon and then given to me to hang. It's a screen print. And so the manufacturer copies the painted product and then imposes it onto this paper. 
Well, that process makes the paper absorb the liquid from the paste at a different proportion than the one in which you're used to when you hang conventional wallpaper. Consequently, the paper gets very hard and very tight, and the seams will take three times the amount of time than conventional paper. It's really that simple. And so joining the seams is a process whereby we join them together, right? Mending them. And then you'll find that the edge curls up. It curls up like, like we're gonna have to do here. It's curled up. Look, when I put this down, what happens to that seam? It's curling. I gotta fight with it. And I gotta do various things like this. So when we get here, we roll our seam. Then we wipe it down. Then we get rid of the track marks that we make from the roller. Gently moving that wallpaper over and over again. And it's a long process. And that's why it takes a while to hang this. Take a look at this. Everything meets here, right? Everything, but look what happens here. So we take our hand, our palm, and we gently pull on the paper and we move that seam up, okay? Until it meets. <clears throat> and it's not easy, see? We're displacing the wallpaper. Let's keep going. Okay, see? I'm gently moving that seam. Look, it joins now, okay? Not an easy process, folks. So when your customer tells you it takes you a long time, you have to be able to explain why. Now we gently move this over so that we can flatten this out. So, basically, you're displacing the material by moving it out of the way so that the pattern matches. It's a time-consuming, anybody can do it, just time-consuming. to get out these little wrinkles. You have to have a dry hand or something dry in your hand to move it, because your finger or your sponge will keep sliding. So get a dry sponge, just slightly damp. Look at the angle I'm using, look. Very close to the wall. Wrinkles out. Now we gotta lay, lay down the edge again. And that's how you join these hand-painted screen print wallpapers. Very tediously, time-consuming, but you see that you can do it.
Don't be intimidated by it because it costs $2,000 a sheet. Just get to work. If I can do it, trust me, you can do it. I don't know if you can tell by the picture, but so it goes in and then it comes out. It's obtuse. We begin our installation with an A panel. This is a pattern that consists of panels A and panels B. So I started my panel A right here and a piece of it was on this wall because I had to end my pattern somewhere strategic. These are 12 foot high walls. You can't end it here, can't end it there. You walk into the room, couldn't, you walk in here, this is the first wall you see. Couldn't hang it here, could do there. I could finish it there, but not the best place. So, I decided to end it above the entryway. So, take a look at the pattern. It has not been trimmed yet. This was the piece I just hung. And you can see the seam here where the pattern breaks, the pattern breaks there, the pattern breaks there. But guess what? I'm overlapped about two inches. The room was wide enough that the beep panel that you're looking at overlapped the A. This is an A and that's a B. And we're only two inches overlapped, which means a great thing. I'm just going to now join this and make it look seamless. Okay, I just put that up. That piece just went up. This will stick to anything, including my graphite outline that I made yesterday. Now you might say, oh, this is overkill, Spencer. Um, well, that's the way I wanna do it. So anyway, you notice that it's oil-based flat. Really, really do you see that? Okay, now you see the importance of the outline. Okay. And if you mess it up, You go right to your beige paint. I use my pinky to guide my hand. Right. Sort of just blend that in there. Okay, get the smaller brush out. I like to hold my breath when I do this.
You know what I like to do as well? Watch this. Put some paint right here. Watch this. Turn, turn the brush around. This way, you don't have to use as much paint. And you get to control it. Control it, you know? As I was editing the video, I have to make mention of the fact that I have a little cold, so I hate sniffling during videos, but I tried to edit out the sniffling. Please just bear with it. The videos take a long time to make. What do you guys think? Folks, don't beat a dead horse, okay? That might be what you were saying already. Think about it. This video might be on the internet for years, right? You know what's nice about this? Look at that. That's Kelly Wurstler. That's, that's the painter who painted that. So mine is consonant with that, the stroking. So I'm done, folks. I'm done. What do you guys think? Let me back up and show you from the floor. But I'll also show you up front because I want you to, I want you to be able to criticize if you're so inclined. Before I left, I saw, saw if somebody was thinking, hey, what about that? You know, sometimes I get people watching my videos and they tell everybody, slow it down, watch what he does here. Like criticizing me. The more criticism, the better. How's that? Okay, folks, you be the judge. Would you say good enough? Excellent, perfect, or terrible? Sorry, the scaffolding is still in the room. But this is the best I can do. I don't own the house. You know what's amazing? The gratifying feeling you get <laughs> when you do something like this. <laughs>